Oh, it's that time, boys and girls. Intel Arc A750. And today we're going to look at it. All right, so my first impressions with it, uh, the packaging is beautiful. I, I do like the way they packaged everything. It, um, when you take it out of the box, it's a little bit heavier than I would have thought. I wasn't expecting it to be quite that heavy. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's because it's the mid-range model, the A750. And uh, a lot of people have mentioned that you know it's a mid-range type card. I was expecting it to be about the weight of maybe, I don't know, I'm ashamed to say it, maybe like a 1660 or a 2060 or something. And it feels, uh, it feels a lot more dense than that. Beautiful rounded corners, edges and all that stuff. It is a very, very, very nice card. It's got three display ports and one HDMI on the back of it. But what we really want to find out is how hard the drivers are to install, how well it plays games, and how well it just, I mean, how does it compare to like, the 6600 or um, a, a regular 3060. It's targeted or it's about in the range of performance, supposedly. So that's what we're going to try to find out is just where it fits in there. And for 250 bucks, you know, even if it's a little bit less than those, that 6600 runs about 230, 250 right now. That's a pretty good competitor for it right in that market. All right, the system I'm going to use got a, a Ryzen 5 5600 in here. Currently, it's got the 6600 XT. I'm going to take that out. We're going to put the Intel Arc A750 in. We're going to do a whole other set of benchmarks, and we're going to test it out and see how it goes. All right, so we've got it all installed in there. Um, I've already run DDU, Device Driver on Installer. I have to admit, that looks that looks pretty nice in there. And that's pretty much where the fun stopped. Uh, now, I will cut to just a second here where I had to do something in the BIOS. Okay, Intel's recommendation is you put on resizable bar. And there was, this isn't quite as easy as it sounds. Uh, what I had to do is I had to go to the boot menu first. And I had to click into the compatibility support module. I had to disable that. And then I could go to here above whoops above 4g decoding i enabled and then it gave me the option to uh, enable resize bar support so that's all done now we're going to see if it makes any difference and once that was all taken care of with no like force foresight or anything uh, there was nothing to kind of walk me through that no instructions from either intel or asrock believe it or not anyway we got that figured out we got resizable bar taken care of Trying to install the drivers, it still told me that I did not have resizable bar selected. Uh, it also had major problems when I was trying to install the drivers. And of course, I had lockups. I had uh, weird things on my screen. And anytime the little pop-up box for the Intel came up, it froze everything out. It was just, it was a nightmare. And I was thinking at first, maybe the card was defective. I tried different uh, different cables. I tried going from HDMI to uh, DisplayPort. I tried a, a number of different things to try to troubleshoot, and finally went back and it actually came down to a couple of things. I went ahead just to be on the safe side, redid the BIOS on that ASRock motherboard, and then I completely DDU'd and reinstalled the video drivers for the Intel Arc. This time it worked. So I don't know where the disconnect was. I don't know if these drivers were having a problem with the old BIOS. I don't know what the deal was. I've done this enough times where uh, it could have been an oversight or it could have been something I messed up or I could have done something. But I've, I've done this so many times that that's probably not likely that there's got to be something that the two did not get along really well. But once I upgraded the or once I updated the BIOS for that ASRock card, which or the ASRock motherboard, which was not that old, and once I went ahead and reinstalled the drivers for Intel, she began to work. Testing today between the A750 uh, with the A750 will be AMD's RX 6600 XT, which I have on hand, which cost uh, in the neighborhood maybe just a little bit more and NVIDIA's RTX 3060, uh, not the 3060 Ti that I do have, but I've, I'm testing it with an RTX 3060 
just try to get that mid range in between there because these are similar cards, similar price points, um, and I, I think they would be good to be able to get numbers to compare to each other a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at uh, there are some some good things and some bad things about how well it worked. There was, there is, and was, still is some criticism about how well this works in DX11, and that's going to become obvious. But in DX12 titles, we shouldn't have had too much of a problem, and that kind of starts to show itself a little bit when we're looking at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, it was behind, but not not horribly behind. It was playable, very playable. Anytime you get 100 frames per second uh, in any setting, it's it's playable and it's fun, and especially a game like this that is not high demand as far as you don't have to have a high frame rate to be able to play this game. Now, in Borderlands 3, we did run into an issue. DX11 was the issue. And it really hit a stone wall. It performed poorly, and it just seemed like something was holding it back, like something was not allowing it to use the full GPU. Uh, the the frequencies for the, the GPU kept dropping back down to 800 and 900 megahertz from the regular 2400 megahertz and it, it stayed at about 50 percent load 40 or 50 or 60 percent load would not take advantage of the full use of that card however now the chart i'm going to show you here still has dx11 numbers for the other two cards that arc does much much better and even ekes out a little bit of a victory in 1440 yeah, it falls off a little bit in 1080p, but in 12 DX12, it starts to look pretty good at some of the higher resolutions. So I was thinking this might do really, really well in DX12 only and probably in Vulcan titles, and we should be good to go with this, even though there's some issues in DX11. Far Cry 6, again, it saw a pretty good performance. It even beat out, uh, in some cases, it beat out well both cards. Uh, beat out the AMD card and then it beat out the Intel card at 1080p. So I wasn't too worried about that. It looked pretty good. Forza Horizon 5 saw it get pretty much its first outright victory. It played pretty well. Uh, went through and did a good job. All of it, again in DX12. So we're thinking this is a this is a great road to go down. World War Z is one of those titles I use it because it's a Vulcan title. I can use it with Vulcan, um, but it wouldn't let me select Vulcan. It only let me select DX11 and kind of show you a little bit of that. It hung up bad and it really, it artifacted and it uh, it would immediately cut back down. It would start out like it was going to, you know, throw 200 frames per second and then it immediately cut back to about 40 frames per second. So my average was below 60 in every single setting. A lot of artifacting, a lot of uh, just a horrible, horrible limiting. The other two shown here are Vulcan. So you can see that the performance has a lot of room to go, but it just it was horribly being held back uh, in this with the A750. Horizon Zero Dawn was another one. Now this really was weird because this is a DX12 title. No matter what resolution or what uh, quality settings I used on this, it, it treated every resolution, whether it's 1440 or 1080 or even tried 900 and 720, they all gave me the same frame rates. And again, it was like it was just wasn't using. It didn't care what resolution I put it on. You could see the difference in the video quality, but it was just the same frame rates no matter what I had. And they were all very consistent. It was something that I really I, I was confused by. But um, yeah, there, there's some games, obviously, that even though DX12 runs pretty well at, are still not optimized. They are uh, still not going to work very, very well. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla was one of those that also that even though it worked okay, it did give me different results for different resolutions and for different, uh, different quality, frame, uh, quality settings for, for textures, but it, it fell way behind of the other. It, it wasn't... Um, it still looked good. It still looked smooth. It, it's still a great looking game, but it was quite a bit behind the other two competitors, both the 6600 XT and the RTX 3060. Cyberpunk was a little bit of a surprise here. I expected this thing to like crap all over itself with Cyberpunk. And maybe this is something we'll look at later because I, I just used the regular settings uh, and it did automatically put in the XESS which was their upscaling technology as opposed to the Radeon, which uses, you know, which uses FSR and, of course, the, the uh, NVIDIA, which uses DLSS. But um, it performed pretty well. Now, it did fall off in 1080p, but in 1440, it competed, it competed fairly well. And even in a lot of cases, beat out the NVIDIA. 
And then our uh, our DX9 title, Counter Strike Global Offensive, which is also that's our esports title. It runs in DX9. We know that the older graphics APIs have issues trying to translate, or that the Arc has issues trying to translate the older graphics APIs. I, I found this worked out pretty well. It there wasn't any hitches. It ran smoothly. There wasn't any artifacting. Now it's quite a few frames per second less than the other two models. But it, it if you didn't know any better. You wouldn't know any better. It played pretty well, and it, there wasn't any any hesitation. It, everything was smooth, and uh, it really was a, a pretty good looking display on with the Arc Seven A Seven Fifty. And I wasn't expecting that. I expected it to be I expected it to be limited or have problems the same as it does in DX Eleven. So I was really pretty. I was pleased about that part. Really pretty surprised. Overall, what do I think about this card uh, for two hundred fifty dollars? I'd like I like the way it looks. Once you get it running, I like a lot of the the way that it uh, it performs. It was relatively easy to set up after I figured a couple of things. And now, now we'll scratch that. It wasn't that easy to set up. The drivers were a mess. Uh, they still every time that I went to go turn the the computer on after changing something else or doing something else, uh, I always keep getting a little pop up from Intel. Hey, can we use, you know, can we change your settings or whatever? I had to disable that in my startup menu. Why am I disabling a driver? You know, why am I disabling the interface for a driver in my, in my startup? I shouldn't have to do that Intel. Um, but the card itself is a nice card. It's heavy. It's well built. It looks good in the machine. It does perform well. Most of the time, some things are very surprising and the XESS, their upscaling seems to work pretty well also. Uh, now, that might be a video I do in the future. I might go ahead and, and take the RX 6600, which we know ha has some lacking features in, in uh, ray tracing, and the Intel Arc, and do both of these against each other in ray tracing and see how their uh, respective upscales work. So that might be something I try. For 250 bucks, if it's worth what you can get a hold of instead of the AMD 6600s, it's not bad. If you've got a PCI 4... Um, you know, mo more of a modern type system, and most of what you're playing is D DX12 titles. Then, then it does okay. It does pretty well, and in some cases, it does very well. And I was, I'm not upset by it. Uh, I would use it and will use it in another system. I'm going to use it in an all Intel system coming up, uh, and um, it's. <sighs> It would be a lot more attractive if it were a little bit less. Uh, now, this is a lot more attractive than I believe the retail price came out at $299 or something. And, and this being cheaper, it is more attractive. It is something that um, it was worth it. It was worth it to buy, especially to test. And I think it's it's a, a card worth using. It's not going to be the card I might necessarily prefer, but it is a card worth using. It It's a decent buy. I think there's a better deal out there, but I'm not going to say I'm not going to trash it and say it's a horrible buy. DX9's come a long way. DX11 needs a lot of work, a lot. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, when when it's capping everything below 60 frames per second, that it's broken. And they admit that Intel admits that they concentrated on things like DX12 and Vulkan, but they have gone back to try to do some of these things like DX9, where CS:GO is probably still one of the most popular games on the Steam uh, when you're playing Steam. Um, so you got to go back and address some of those games. So I, I think they've done a good job there. Uh, I'm very encouraged by the fact that the, there continues to be drivers come out for it. So that makes me feel good. And I'm also encouraged by the fact that they, they've announced Battle Mage and Celestial. Rumored. I'm not going to say announced, but they're rumored. And there's the rumor of them buying more chips for the next two series of graphics cards. So I feel pretty good about this not being a one-off. Uh, but would I go out and buy a bunch of these? Or would I start making systems out of this? <sighs> I bought this one. Um, I... I I can't give it a solid yes, but I can't tell you not to go get it either. I, I'd say if it's available and you can find it at a good price and the AMD is not available, I, it looks darn good in the system and it does work pretty well. So I'll give it that. I'll give it that very, very much. Come a long way. And if they keep working on the drivers, um, we saw in some cases it actually did beat the uh, NVIDIA and the AMD cards. And I, I think it has more of a chance to do that if they continue to work with the drivers and continue to optimize What's next for this GPU? Well, the next thing is it's going to go into an Intel Deep Cool build. And uh, 
so that'll be coming up on the channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do that so you can catch that when it comes out. And uh, I am going to use it. I'm going to continue to test. I think one thing I am going to do is test the ray tracing against the 6600 that's back in my gaming, uh, gaming PC over there and just see how that goes. I, I, I want to see what the effect is, which one does ray tracing better, how hard they get hit, uh, which in games like Cyberpunk and probably Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus, by the way, has an incredible... Uh, benchmarking suite that just you do put in what you want it to benchmark and it goes through all of them you don't have to sit there and anyway uh but it's not used very much for benchmarks so i don't use it either but it's a great it's a great looking benchmark so i'll probably do that because it does have ray tracing and and i'll see if intel doesn't have their xcss on that as well so that might be something i do but in the meantime i will continue to test i will use it in the build and uh i am glad i bought it uh, so maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. My recommendation, I can't give you a solid yes or no, but I can tell you that I'm, I'm glad I bought it. What's next on the channel? Uh, well, I've got the HP Dell Frankenstein that I'm building. Uh, I've got some drives I need to swap out from Danny D to my notebook and fix the notebook. Uh, a couple of things like that. So take you guys along for the ride a little bit. I still want to work on that. Uh, I just need to be brave. That's all there is to it. Uh, I need to stop putting it off. We'll see. Uh, I, but you know what, looking at that HP Dell Frankenstein, maybe it'd be easier to convert that to a server. I don't know. I just have to stop being scared to do it and do it. Anyway, that is it for me this time. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of it. If you did go ahead and hit a like, uh, I'd really, really appreciate it if you subscribe. Don't forget to hit me up on the other socials like buymeacoffee.com and thatpaulguy.tech, uh, where I've got a, a blog. I got a little bit of background on this uh, what doing this and the benchmarks and everything on that on that blog I'll link it below but if you don't do anything else please do me one favor and that's be nice to each other uh, just do something nice do something kind same thing I always say hold the door open say hi say good morning wave something it, just, it doesn't cost anything to do something kind and you might you might realize it makes you feel better and it probably definitely makes the person you're doing it for feel better so don't we all need a little bit of that? Anyway, uh, until next time, when I get myself in a whole lot of trouble I don't need to be getting into, that's it. So I'll see you later.